Hey, welcome back to another episode of the JK Experience. And this is where I typically would say uh, my right hand man is here, uh, but he's not. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you're going to have me all by yourself. And as I was thinking about this, um, you know, it's a little bit weird going back to not having somebody as a uh, to w- walk you through and help you through uh, some ideas through this podcast. So uh, I'm excited, and also um, it's just a little bit uncomfortable for sure. But I'm I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today, and I hope that you guys uh, I hope that you guys going to take some great things away from our conversation. Um, so, you know, we've been wrapping up the year, we're getting into this new year, this new decade. And, uh, I tell you what, just the, the things that have happened. And I really hope that you've had some time to really reflect on how your previous year went, how the things in your life, uh, have gone and where you want to go in the future. And if that doesn't excite you, then you really need to take a step back and you need to kind of reevaluate like what is 2020? going to bring me and why am I so excited about it? And listen, when I say that, I say that with all humility in the sense of, listen, bad things happen to us. We, 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 it's called life. Things, challenges happen daily. And as you grow and as you continue to try to improve yourself, you know, it's really, it's really easy to take some steps back. It's really easy to fall down on your face and to experience failure and disappointment and things of that life will throw at you. And, you know, the reason why it's so important to have goals, the reason why it's so important to uh, continue to put people in your life and to continue to grow yourself is because when life comes at you, when, when, when devastation happens to you or your family or your finances, you know, you've got to have some inward internal intestinal fortitude to be able to walk through that. And not only walk through that, you also have to have this mindset. You, you learn to have this mindset that, you know, life is happening for me. And oftentimes we, we just, we play the victim and, you know, I also, I say that from a personal experiences. Um, you know, I've talked about this on the show before and, you know, for 13 years, you know, internally, I was the victim of circumstances that uh, some might say were out of my control, but I believe that we're in my control. And it took me that long to realize that all of these things that were happening in my life were actually happening for me so that I was in the best position that I am right now. And and I know, and that's really hard. That's really hard to, to kind of, con- to, to, to wrap your head around. And I know a lot of us struggle with that. A lot of us have had really challenging times. Uh, maybe we've had it in our marriages. Maybe we had it, uh, a, a really challenging time with raising our kids and the decisions that they're making. Uh, maybe we've, we've had some hard, challenging times in, in business. And if you're an entrepreneur, you know what that's like, because, you know, every month you're looking at payroll, every month you're looking at uh, accounts receivable, every month month, you're looking at, you know, how business is going to continue to move forward. You know, if you work for somebody, if you're an employee and uh, you don't have a lot of control, the scare, the scary part about that is that you don't have a lot of control. And as the economy continues to adjust and change, you don't have that certainty of maybe having that position in the future. And that can really be powerful in your life. And when I say powerful, it can be really, really hard. It could be, you know, you're hitting a wall. And, you know, I want to talk about some ways to this today. I want to talk about how you set yourself up for when things happen that are out of your control or when things happen that you were the, you were the person because of why it happened. How do you put yourself in the best situation? How do you help yourself work through those emotions and those challenges in your life? And, you know, it's not a one step thing, by the way. Um, you know, this, these are, these are many things that you want to start looking at and start challenging yourself in your life. And this is a process, you know, for me, this was a process and it was a self discovery. And here's the thing that I, that I found early in my life is that I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. You know, I didn't want to go out and make the new product. I, I don't have the desire to invent something that's never been invented before. I want to improve on things that were already created by other people or that we were already created because I wanted to know that there was a process and there was a way and a path in order for me to ex- experience some success. 
And so as I've tackled and I've continued to move forward in my life, um, that's always been kind of my mindset is that I wanted to learn from other people. I wanted to absorb the wisdom that they had gained over those years because I didn't necessarily want to have to go through all that pain. But I also wanted to implement those things that I learned and I want to improve on them. And then I also believe that I want to, I want to use that wisdom that I've gotten out of, you know, over my life, um, and helping other people to improve on those areas as well too. You know, when we, when we coach people, when we, um, have conversations with, with people, we want them to take it another step further. You know, we don't want people to just to duplicate the process. We want people to take that process and enhance it and make it better. I tell you some of the greatest stories that, um, that I've been told from when we've coached and helped people through challenges or through just big decisions is when they've taken some advice or they've taken some of the paths and some knowledge that we have uh, given them and they've exploded it when they've taken it and they've, they've 10 X it. And that's what you want to see. That's what we want to, to have people experience when they're listening to this podcast is we want you to take it to the next level. And I hope that you do that in your life. So I want to give you something that we've incorporated into our company, something that, that I've, that I personally have been doing and it has been a life game changer for me. And, um, it was interesting. I, I remember this it was, uh, very vividly. I was, uh, I was in a Barnes and Noble about four years ago, four or five years ago. And I was looking for, um, this is one of those moments in my life when I was really, um, into, um, reading and exploring and basically just absorbing as much knowledge as I possibly could about leadership, about, um, how to be a responsible leader, how to be a responsible owner, how to, um, just be a responsible man in my life. And I came across this book and it was a book written by John Gordon and, uh, Dan Britton, Jimmy Page. And the book is called one word that will change your life. And it's a, I picked it up. It was a very easy read. I think I had it done in like two days and, um, and it was a game changer. It, it literally was, it was, it, it was something that I didn't know that the title would make that big of an impact in my life. And not only did I feel so passionate about what the, the message in this book was about, uh, for me personally, but I felt, and I, I, I felt like I need to evangelize this out to other people. And so in the position that I was in, luckily I get to share with other people, the things in my journey, I get to share with people where I'm at and the things that I'm doing that are helping and improving me. And so as I wanted to make a greater impact with this book, we started to implement it into our companies. The first one of course was our, our real estate company. And what we would do is we took that book and we would, um, we had all of our admin, uh, read it, all of our leadership read it. And at that time it wasn't that many leadership. There wasn't, it wasn't that big. And so we had a handful of people reading it and then I had my team read it. And then we said, you know what, as we are looking at like, why are we different from other companies? Why, wh what sets us apart? What are the things that we truly believe in? And as you guys have heard me say many times on this podcast is that I truly believe that our companies are in the business of changing lives. And this was one way that we could do it. You know, it's, it's easy to say stuff. It's easy to have, easy to have a mission statement. It's easy to have a just cause, but how do you actually put application to it? How do you put practical application to the things that you believe wholeheartedly in your heart? And this is one of those ways to do it. We could actually say, how do we help people change their lives? Well, we give them opportunities to read books like this. And so the one word book has been a tremendous impact in our companies. In fact, what happens in our company, when you come to work for us, it doesn't matter and work with us, I should say, it doesn't matter what company it is. Like you are given that book because we believe that no matter where you're at in life, that this book can make an impact. And so you read it and then not only do you read it, you also tell us the word and then we actually print it out and we put it up on one of our walls. About two years ago, um, we had moved from our previous, uh, building and our previous building, we'd been there for a couple years 
And as we continue to grow and grow and grow, uh, we added more words and more words and more words. And it got to a point where we call it, it's our yellow tel- tennis ball wall. And it got to the point where this wall that was 20 by 16 was absolutely filled to the brim with walls of inspir- uh, words of inspiration. And it was just a daily reminder. Every time you walked by that wall, it was a daily reminder of maybe your word, but it could also be another word that somebody else chose and it chose and it, and it, and it resonated with you for a little bit and it inspired you for that day. And it maybe motivated you through a challenging time in your life. So going back to this book, the whole premise of it is really to find this one word, the one word that will resonate with you for that year. And the reason why this is so powerful is because we all know that we, that so many of us, you know, we have goals or we make new year's resolutions and we make some really elaborate ones. Sometimes we make some really stupid ones because we're so motivated at the time or, you know, we're staying way up, up late and we're just sick and tired of, you know, what we've done. And, you know, a lot of it is our health and exercise, right? Uh, or maybe it was just some decisions that we made, but we, we make some decisions that are maybe a little bit irrational. Maybe we, we, you know, we were really powerfully emotional at that time, but we really weren't, we weren't really prepared, prepared for the commitment, Right. And so we make these New Year's resolutions, and I will tell you that uh, 50% of people within 30 days are no longer doing the resolution, and then 50% of them within another 30 days are no longer doing their resolutions. And so you've got less than a quarter of people after just simply two months not following through with their resolutions, and they've already been defeated. And this one-word book is so powerful because what it does is it allows you to have one simple word that pushes you through the areas of your life that you need to be pushed. And if you know me, you know that I believe in three areas of your life are business, health, and life. And when you can when you can find a word, when you can, uh, when you can discover a word that resonates with you in all areas of your life, it's amazing what it does for you. As I was reflecting on last year, my word for last year was action. And the reason why that word was so important for me is because, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big vision guy. I I love looking at what the future is going to hold. I love looking at the opportunities that we have in our workspaces and what we have in um, my personal life and what I can, what I potentially can accomplish in my health and vitality. And unfortunately, one of the things that I saw myself doing was spending a lot of time dreaming and thinking and vision casting. And we know without action, none of it's going to come true. We know that if just because we have an idea or maybe we've, we've discovered a plan, if we don't take action or execute on that plan, those dreams can't come true. And after a quite a while of just literally sitting in some silence and, and I'm going to go over four things that you need to do in order to discover your word. But as I was going through this process, this word action came to me and it started to resonate with me. And, and I'll tell you that I, at first I thought it was a different word. At first I thought I had my word and I was ready and prepared to do that, but I spent a little more time thinking about it. And then this word came to me and then it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And that's been the driving force for me for 2019 in all areas of my life. Am I taking action in the areas of my life? And as sad as I am to let that word go, as I've taken time to think about this new year and the opportunities that are going to be presented to us and the opportunities that we're going to go chase, I've got another word that literally scares the crap out of me because I know that in order to allow this word to be my 2020 word, I'm opening up a lot of things that potentially could happen. And that in itself is definitely very intimidating. 
And so I want to give you some hacks about how do you help discover your word. So the book itself is going to do that, but I just kind of want to give you some personal things that um, I believe on top of like the process that they give you um, that I've over the years have found that have been very helpful. Um, first of all, you just got to read the book, right? So read the stinking book. Don't just listen to what I'm saying here. Read the book and then you're going to have a better understanding of exactly what I'm talking about. The first thing that, uh, or the second thing that I guess would be humility. You know, as you're thinking about this word, we're going to naturally go, you know, we're, we're, uh, we as human beings will naturally go to a word that sounds just amazing and awesome and that we can brag about it. And, you know, when we tell people about this word that we're inspired by, it sounds powerful and, you know, heroic and, um, uh, and just, you know, amazing. Right. And I would just tell you right now to, you got to put some humility into this understand that this word is not about anybody else. And as much as you want to, and as much as you're going to potentially share this with other people, understand that it's you that is going to be living with this. It's you that is going to be inspired by this. It is you that 365 days out of the entire year are going to have to be reminded why this word is your word and nobody else's. And so I'm going to really encourage you that when you think about this, don't allow your ego to get into it. And you want to pick some amazing word that just sounds so good on paper, but when it comes to living it out, it doesn't resonate with you and it doesn't inspire you in those areas of your life. The next thing I would say is that you really got to be able to sit in silence. A couple of weeks ago, we did a podcast about um, how do you, you know, how do you lead in your life? And the first one was to listen, right? And listen and silence are the same. I mean, they got the same uh, same word or same letters in them. And I would really encourage you that you need to get to a point in your life where you are being silent. And within that silence is when you start to hear some pretty amazing things. You heard, you start to hear some pretty amazing thoughts and words and, um, ideas, but it usually only comes when you're silent. And so as you're going through this process, as you're doing what the book says, I think it's very, very important for you to be able and be aware that silence is so key in helping you discover the best word for you. Now, can you, can you discover a good word and it'll, and it'll be good and it'll be inspirational for you for that year? Yeah, absolutely. But as you've done this over years and years and years, you understand, I mean, you understand the journey that you're about to go on and you, you, uh, appreciate that just because it's that one word, that first word, it doesn't mean that that's truly it. Maybe it's just a part of that getting to the real world word that you need to, take hold of. So as you are thinking about this, as you're going through this process, I really want to encourage you, first of all, to have humility. Secondly, is to have silence. The next one is to have, to take time. Um, I, like I told you last year, um, you know, I thought I had my word within like the first couple hours of being silent and thinking about the future and all that stuff. And, and I, and I was so sure that I was just like, this is it, this, you know, I can see how it means this in my health and vitality. I mean, I can see how it means and resonates in my business and in my family life and in my spiritual life. And, and I was excited about it. Um, I wasn't over the top. I wasn't, you know, I, you know, I, it, I was still good with it but I took time with it, right? I allowed it to kind of just resonate with me over a period of a couple days. And it was a pretty powerful thing to be able to do is just take time and be patient with it. Once again, it, you've got 365 days in this year. And if it takes you a week to find your word for the rest of the year, that's okay. Don't rush into it and feel like you have to discover this word within a couple hours or even a couple days. Sometimes it is a process. Sometimes it takes a lot of reflection. Sometimes it takes a lot of silence. Sometimes it takes a lot of humility to sit back and just discover what God's telling you, what people are telling you, and what you're telling yourself. And when you find the word, you'll have a better idea. Like you're going to know it, right? And, and, and when you take time, you're going to really, really, you're going to really know it. 
the last thing I would say in this process is that you've got to trust it. Trust is really challenging. It's tr tr trust is really hard, right? Um, the only time that we truly have trust is when we look at things in the past, right? Um, because trust is, is putting us in a position to have faith in the future. And that's a really hard thing to do. And most of us aren't really good at that. As you're discovering this word, as you're discovering how this word can impact you and really resonate in your life for an entire year, I really encourage you to trust that word that comes to your mind. If you've taken humility, if you've sat in silence, if you have uh, taken your time, then you got to trust that this is the right word. You got to trust that this is the word that was meant for you for this year. And no matter how much it scares you, as I've shared, the, the word that I have this year scares the crap out of me. But no matter how much it scares you, you have to trust that there's a reason why this word has been resonating with you. When you can do all of those things, when you can, when you can have humility, when you can sit in silence, when you can take your time, and then when you can finally just trust that somehow this word was meant for you for this year, then you found your word. And when you do that, it is amazing what you'll be able to go through. It's amazing that, listen, it doesn't lessen the pain of challenges and the pain of setbacks and the pain of failures and disappointments. It doesn't lessen that. What it does, though, is it gives you the courage to overcome that fear and that disappointment. What it does is it, it gives you hope that there's a reason for everything that is happening in your life. And so many of us don't have hope. So many of us don't have the courage it takes to overcome those big things and those big obstacles in our life. And so as I told you before in the beginning of the show, it's not just one thing. It's just not, you just can't have one answer to solve all of the problems in your life or to help you become this, this amazing person in your life. It is a multitude of things. But I will tell you that this is one of those things. This is one of those things that can help you become this person that you've desired to be. Go get your word. Go find your word. Write it down. Share it with other people. Let other people know why this word resonates with you. When you can explain it to other people, you have now taken ownership. And it is going to get you through all of the challenges that you will experience this coming year. And you're going to be able to look back at that year and say, man, did I grow? Man, did I take on those challenges? Man, I had some setbacks, but I never let it defeat me. And the person that you have become will have inspired the person that you were. I hope that this resonates with you guys. I hope that you guys took some great things from this. I highly encourage you guys, the one word that will change your life, go get this book, you guys. It will definitely, definitely put you on the right course to living an exceptionally great life. We'll talk to you soon.